Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Computer Wednesday, I'm going to talk about Computer Express Link. So let's dive right into it. It's called CXL. Now what exactly is the problem? Well, reality is hyperscaling computing, as in like making a idiotically large server farm, is now becoming the next normal thing. Basically, it's like we don't build server, we build hyperscaler now. And hyperscaler have the ability to virtualize a hell lot of things, and it gives you options. Basically, they will be built by Amazon Web Services, Azure, or things of that nature, and then they're gonna sell services where you can craft whatever you need. Basically, you're like, hey, I need this much storage, I need this much bandwidth, I need this much compute. You're gonna do whatever you need. To. Now, we are reaching at a point where we are making a lot of hyperscalers. Apparently, there are around 500 plus hyperscalers. And uh, we are reaching a point where we cannot actually make it any bigger, any more powerful, simply because the current IO standards, aka PCI Express, itself is the becoming the bottleneck, meaning we can't really push beyond a certain point. And we are suffering from what we classify as over provisioning. What does that mean? That simply means you are putting way too much RAM chip. Meaning, if you are, if I ask you how many RAM chips are there in your computer, you're like, you may count RAM DIMMs. And the, like basically sticks that you add on here's the that's just one component you will have way too many especially in a server you will have every ssd that you are that will also have few chips every nick uh, basically network attached cards that you will have that is doing high uh, speed networking that will also have the raid card they will also have that so you'll have way too many uh, stuff and you always because of the limitation because of the fact that you can't change it dynamically scale it you have to over provide it meaning you make sure that under no circumstances it becomes the bottleneck because once it becomes bottleneck you can't change it so it creates over provisioning that means poor resource utilization meaning grand total you may have uh, 128 terabytes of ram but utilization wise you will be like dude we are barely utilizing let's say 100 of it so that creates a very serious limitation and cost of cloud computing meaning these things are the way future flat out done fixed deal but the cost basically that's are coming happening because of way too many things like inflation complexity of the chips and ic's all of those things are making it idiotically expensive that is true but here's the uh, there are some there have to be some clawback meaning if the price of chips keep growing the way they are growing at some point we'll, we'll just reach a stagnation because you can only extract so much money out of Amazon Web Services. There is a limit to that. Like you can only charge so much for your Netflix, so much for your YouTube. Nobody's going to pay billions of dollars for your Netflix account. So that's the inherent point. The cost of cloud computing must stabilize. And if it keeps going the way that it's going, we have to like, you know, we're going to be in bad time very soon. So CXL was created. Now this puppy literally control C, control V, PCI 5.0. It's almost like how Thunderbolt, uh, like uh, Thunderbolt 3 was control C, control V in USB 4, but many options were like, you know, removed, but like it's the same core, same core is here, PCI 5.0. Now why they waited for PCI 5.0 is very simple. PCI 5.0 is the first time where your PCI bus speed can exceed your RAM speed. So let that sink in, PCI 5.0. And uh, what they did is, the hardware is the same, electrical is the same, uh, but they added three more protocols. Basically, these protocol would be implemented in hardware, software, and all that jazz uh, on top of it. Basically, that's the difference between PCI and CXL, is that it has CXL.io, very self-explanatory, CXL.mem, very explanatory, CXL.cache, very explanatory and the whole idea is this will be the next ecosystem move basically how we went from having things to putting everything in pci express how do you connect your network pci express how do you connect your ssds pci express everything nowadays is going through pci express this will become the next ecosystem now this puppy started in 2019 and cxl consortium was built because it, this was originally designed by intel but intel is not dumb enough to think that if we are making it everybody else is going to copy it that's not going to happen and if you want to make a standard you have to willingly get other people to cooperate with you so consortium was created and this bag, uh, you know big boys what have started to come into it which are the big boys you have uh, intel amd uh, you have arm you have cisco you have dell emc you have ibm you have huawei you have nvidia you have samsung you have microsoft you have meta you have google you have alibaba group basically everybody who is working with a uh, hyperscaler as of now and more than big enough basically if these people start to implement something as a standard it is a standard so they are doing that and uh, this whole puppy was created compute express link and right now it's on its third iteration so this puppy is moving fast because again people with deep pocket are supporting it so that's cxl then we come to the what's the result of it well the result of it is this is a new io bus like how pci is the new current bus uh, this will become the new io bus and it allows for pooling resources meaning 
collapse everything into one virtual pool that your software or drivers or whatever have you can access it meaning you can have multiple units and all of them are acting as one giant pool basically how we uh, you know virtualize giant uh, hard drives because one single hard drive cannot be that big like even the biggest ssd only goes to like you know 100 terabyte if you have to go like you know a few petabytes you have to collapse multiple of them like uh, you have to have multiple of 100 terabytes uh, ssds that's how you do it so same thing is going to happen here but for memory and uh, the idea is that you will no longer need to put memory in everything like gpu a, a, ai a6 raid cards network cards and all that jazz and all of them will use collectively share that now this the core component is that the hyperscaler people they're rich they do not worry about the cost of equipment but they do worry about the utilization of equipment. meaning if you're like this is a, a, a let's say amd epic processor this super expensive processor they're like i don't care uh, i'm gonna you, you're gonna utilize 100 percent uh, shut up and take my money that's the very critical aspect. Memory utilization. They do not like idle hardware. They like the hardware that is working their ass off because again, they know that hardware is going to become obsolete very quickly. And that's why server industry is like inherently one or two generation ahead because they have to do it in order to serve the current generation market. They, if they try to serve current generation uh, consumer with current generation hardware, they simply can't. That's why they are generally always one or two generations ahead and they are willing to pay for the equipment. That's not an issue for them. They are like, oh, it's too expensive. That's never an issue. It's just like, are we actually utilizing it? That's the key here. If they're not utilizing it, they're like, dude, I'm not gonna buy it. And caching can also be done system-wide. This is a very big thing. It's, uh, think of it this way, right now, you may be like, uh, why can't we have Jarvis level AI? Well, reality is hardware is limited. What does that mean? That simply means if you take like on an actual IC level, you take the IC, you go deep into it. Like you go to instruction set architectures level or even deeper than where you are figuring out logic gates, basically, you know, AND gate, OR gate, those sort of things. You will find the amount of energy it takes to compute, basically, like, you know, is it this or that? That is super low, but the amount of energy it takes to carry data file from uh, your cache to that location, it's expensive electricity wise and that's why we generally try to put as many ram chip as quick close to uh, desired location as possible because inherently uh, transferring you know cash is very very and um, you know extensive and energy intensive also consequence of that is you're only as fast as your cash like how the heck m1 chips from apple can somehow compete with uh, high-end uh, laptops well reality was very simple how close was the ram ic to the main compute ic Electrically and also protocol wise. It's not just like, oh, it's close to it. That's not good enough. Is it actually good in terms of compute wise? So that's the result of it. We're going to have a world where everything will become a pool where we can, like, we will no longer be limited by, okay, hard drives can be pulled together, processor can be pulled together. No, no, everything, including RAM, can be pulled together, including cache memories, can be pulled together. So what's the aim of it? Well, aim of it is very simple, where this will allow you to make a system that scales up. To your requirement means to your demand basically memory and caching becomes scalable that can be sold like amazon web services right now they will give you how much bandwidth you can have how much uh, data storage you can have how much compute you can have how many gpu horsepower you can have then you will also like how much ram you have now you're like is it needed well here's the deal many time if you are uh, working on data sets you may not need very high fps from your gpu but you may need ludicrously large uh, vram uh, like what's the core difference between uh, GeForce cards versus radio, uh, basically Quadro cards. Quadro cards generally come up with a ludicrously large uh, VRAM capacity, like 64 GB VRAM on one card. And they have to it because it can't, it's not designed in such a way that it can be scaled up. So if you are in a scenario where it's like, dude, like I have, uh, let's say GTX 1070, I have GTX 1070. It's more than good enough. The IC is more than good enough, but to run future games, I really need like, let's say at least 12 GB of VRAM. It's like, if I can put 12 GB VRAM on that, my problem will be solved, but I cannot. It's it was not designed for that. So that's the whole idea. That's the aim of it, where that becomes an optional. So all, everything, for example, your uh, network uh, QSF port systems, these are powerful puppies. They can dump hundreds of gigabytes of data per second. So they do require VRAM uh, if they do not, have, um, like DRAM. If they do not have that RAM, they will not be able to uh, operate smoothly. That requires a lot of system. And because of the, the fact that you will not be able to scale it up, they will put as much DRAM as possible to like you know satiate or maybe sometimes they will be limited it's like bro this action i actually do far more and you will have that like you know this card can on principle can do like you know 200 gbps of data transfer but it never reaches that because the ram chips are getting overloaded same can happen with ssd ssds nand chips that not that expensive but the moment you put a controller price goes up a little bit the moment you put a controller that can has to handle 
RAM chips uh, plus and uh, basically flash chips, the cost goes exponentially higher. Again, if you can just remove these puppy, price will go down. If you can remove RAM chips from this, price will go down. Like this is a rear guard. Like they just actually have RAM slots. They're like because you have to do that and many times they also require uh, basically battery power operations where you have to be like bro it can dump all the data into a per uh, persistent memory in case of power loss and imagine it this way like right now we have ssds like optane intel optane was like inherently designed such a way that it can replace this puppy so you will no longer need uh, power cycling systems and you can see that the elastic cxl memory support solution of course it does require controller uh, fpga unit so whole point is that everything can in the future, basically next year or year after that, will become uh, RAM free, especially for server industries. Like SSD will no longer have like, you know, a giant RAM volume into that. It's like, bro, no. All it has is a controller and in fact, it will keep the price steady. Same will go for RAID cards, same will go for network cards, same will go with graphics card. The graphics card is a very critical aspect because you can get a lot of work done on a very cheap uh, SOC. If you can get the VRAM as an option where you're like, hey, I want to scale it up or I want to scale it down. So you can reduce cost of hardware in the server industry. Now, I do not think, that, uh, again, companies are saying that it will reduce it. I don't think it will reduce it. I think it will just stabilize it. Right now, the price is going like this. It will like stabilize it. So again, that would be more than good enough because again, everything is upper limit. It's, it's like exactly like how real estate is like yeah, real estate, real estate, real estate. It's like, dude, it collapses because there is only a certain amount of money that people are willing to pay a piece of land. If it exceeds too much beyond your like, you know, salary, you're like, bro, I'm going to leave the job because I can't afford to live in here. So it's one of those things. Price has to remain stable. You cannot just go YOLO. So what we can expect in the future? Well, reality is hyperscalers are getting memory as a factor. That's the first change that you're going to notice. And a bunch of this can be made that will be even more large in terms of scale, in terms of speed, but they will be far more simpler. They will be what we call a dumb SSD. You can see that right now in Apple M1 Pros, uh, they are using SSDs that do not have DRAMs. That, like all the DRAM calculation is done by uh, SOC. So same thing will happen on a server scale. And uh, current designs like specifically CXL 3.0 is inherently designed in such a way that you can have RAM on a different physical server. Not just like, okay, I have a board and every RAM is like here. No, no, no. You can have a whole rack. All it has is this puppy's uh, memory modules, basically. And all you will have, like, Sarapuro, you need that go to the second server box, like outside of the chassis. And that's a very big thing. You may think that's a very small benefit. Nah, that that's changes things drastically, dramatically. So RAM allocation will be based on workload rather than they'll put, instead of putting like the upper maximum that they can put, they'll put minimum to run the operating system to do all, all the jazz. And then they'll give it as an add-on card. It's like, bro, are we actually using the RAM? Okay, add it. If you're not using, don't add it. If you're like, hey, bro, our network is like, you know, reaching a point because we are sending too many encrypted packet. Encrypted packet requires too much RAM. It's like, okay, let's add two of that. Like, hey, we are doing a rendering farm, but like uh, we are really don't have assets that are actually consuming 64 uh, gigabytes of, uh, you know, data per card. They're like, okay, reduce it. Reduce it to 32. Do you never want to be in a scenario where you're over utilizing something um, like as in like over provisioning anything and if it's a shared pool you can virtualize it and share it exactly based on your workload so gpu without vram would be uh, basically vram will be a throttle you know, like server industry will be like okay how much do you actually need for this workload i only need let's say 16 gb you get it for uh, this workload for let's say this frame rendering you only need 17 you get 17 you do not get oh i have to go to 32 gb no no you need 17 GB, you need you get 17 GB. You need 18.9 GB, you get 18.9 GB. It will not give you one megabyte extra than you need. So that's the whole point. And it's a very big shift that's happening in the background, but it's like being supported by a lot of people. And you can see the speed. CXL 1.0 on 1.1 uh, was released in 2019 and 32 giga transfers per second. Just one year after 2020, they added way too many extra steps like type 1, type 2, type 3 devices support, memory pooling support, global persistent flush uh, support, and a lot of that things were added in CXL 2.0. That was 20, one year after the launch. CXL 3.0, right now active, that is in 2022, uh, 64 giga transfers per second. Like the link speed is idiotic at this point in time. And this puppy can do just almost everything direct memory access to peer to peer. Meaning, if your network chip is like, bro, I think uh, I really don't need this, like, I'm not gonna be pull myself out of the pool and i'll be like okay and other things that are like dude i think cpu can do some more work if it has ram go yolo on it all those things uh 
like every Tom, Dick and Harry is very serious about this. Of course, because of the cost, I don't think every single server that is being built right now will use this. But more and more hyperscalers, they are like done, we are jumping to CXL as quickly as possible. More and more companies are like loving this idea. And this will, this will be one of those things like how we shifted from uh, HDD to SSD. This will be similar to that. Like, this is a very big shift, inherently very big shift. And inherently it should allow to reduce cost of uh, like, you know, hardware. And that is a desirable thing at this point in time. We cannot just live in a world where it's like, oh, every NVMe SSD is, has like, you know, four gigabytes of VRAM and uh, DRAM on top of it. Or every, um, you know, GPUs have too much RAM. And if you have RAM as an option, uh, then you can select it. It's like, hey, movie renders, like let's say uh, some movies actually require 128 gigabytes of VRAM. Take it and go. Take it and go. And it was like something even more crazy. It's like YOLO amounts of VRAM you need. Take it and go. If you don't need it, don't waste it. So it's a very, uh, you know, desirable thing. And the fact the speed of the upgrades is like 32 giga transfer per second to 64 giga transfer per second in two years. That's damn fast. That's like nothing, nothing turbo booster. So this is a very interesting future that we're going to have. And maybe in five to 10 years, it will become a thing that in your desktop, you will also have this sort of pool memory where it's like, hey, dude, this game requires a bit higher VRAM. You're like, just buy more VRAM. Hopefully, I hope so. So this was my presentation on uh, basically CXL. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please see the like button, share it amongst our friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.